all first of all God says I am God there's none like me why because I'm the only God who sets the end first and then I back up and I begin you know what I'm saying? I gotta go God says look I am God there's no God who can do this he says I set the end first I end things first then I back up and I begin them I am God I never stop with the beginning you gotta get this sir this is why I'm debt free today this is why I never pray for money this is why I don't worry about a thing in my life because of this one statement God says I am God there's none like me why I said the end first I always end things first I finish them first then I back up and I start them that means whenever I start something that's because it's already finished. You will get it in a minute. See, in other words, this is why God never panics. Why? He's finished. That's why he placed the seed of everything inside itself. He puts the end in the beginning. He puts the finish inside the start. He put the final into the initiation. He puts the completion into the initiation. When God starts something, it's already finished. That means God doesn't allow anything to begin unless it's already finished. That means when those 500 million sperms were dashing toward the egg in your mother and father's sexual intercourse, God looked down from heaven at 500 million sperms and he says, I want that one. Guess who that was? That was you. He still ain't got it. You started. I'm going to say it again. You started. Still ain't got it. In your mother's womb, when the sperm hit the egg, boom, God said, that's the beginning. He doesn't allow anything to begin unless it's all in. You are already finished. Potential is when you hide the end inside the beginning. This is why every one of you in this room, every one of you, inside of you, you feel that you were supposed to do something important. Even if you never do it, you feel there's got to be something that I came here to do. Matter of fact, let's read one more verse. Verse 10 says, I said the end before the beginning and I make known from what? Ancient times what is yet to come. That statement means not only do I begin with the end, but when I begin, I let you see the end at the beginning that is called vision this is why children are born dreaming this is why you had big dreams until you ran into your parents you had big dreams until you ran into your teachers at school you have big dreams until you run into these adults in the church. Your problem is you two grown up. They killed your dreams. 
What you saw when you was nine was your end. But they've trapped you into a job now. You know what Jesus said? He said, look, when you come into my kingdom, you stop being an adult. Because adults don't dream anymore. Except you become like little children again. You cannot enter kingdom lifestyle. It takes a child to buy a piece of property and build this building in this city. It takes a child to plan the next building. That don't make no sense. But God says you are a child. I like you. Think like a child. Nothing is impossible. You should be proud if they call you childish. You know, we built the largest building in our country. Largest building. Everybody uses it now. The government uses it. The colleges uses it. All the big groups uses it. Because but when I announced it, they said I was a child. They said, you're crazy. No one has ever done anything. This is my country. I said, yes, but that's what I saw. You know what your problem is? And there's a book out there. Please get that book on power vision. Because your eyes are your problem. Hallelujah. The greatest gift God ever gave man is not the gift of sight. It's the gift of vision. Hallelujah. Why? Because sight is a function of the eyes. But vision is a function of the heart. Hallelujah. Sight shows you what is. Vision shows you what could be. And the greatest enemy of vision is sight. You ask a child, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be the mayor. And what do you say? Oh, be realistic. You just kill their dream. They were seeing what's already finished. As a teenager, he has a daydream. By the way, you need to daydream more. Because <laughs> your daydreams are your real dreams. Your daydreams are your purpose. This young man, teenager, had a daydream. He saw himself sitting on a throne. He saw his whole family kneeling before him. He saw himself feeding them and taking care of them. He was a teenager in a poor little village in Marion, South Carolina. And he went to his mama and daddy. He says, I saw something today. I saw me feeding all of y'all. And his brother says, Who do you think you are? Sounds familiar? You think you're better than us? They said, sound familiar? Yeah. yeah. You don't do that here in Marion. Get a job at McDonald's and turn burgers and settle down. Who do you think you are dreaming that big? You can't dream that big in Marion. You know what we got here? You get a job, you pay bills, and you die. But God sent a man one day named Miles Monroe to marry him to tell you, don't believe nothing they tell you. If God be for you, who can be against you? Let God be true and every man shout amen somebody. It was already finished. That young 17 year old boy was thrown into a pit. 
his clothes were ripped off by his own brothers. Ah, but you see, look at me. Once you know what you saw, then what you see is temporary. You still ain't got it. See, he already saw his finish. But his eyes could see the pit. I'm talking to someone here tonight. If you know what you saw, and what you see is not what you saw, then what you see got to be temporary. I'm about to scream all by myself. I say it's temporary. When you go to work tomorrow, I want you to walk and work with a little smile on your face. And they ask you why you smile and tell them this ain't what I saw. Hey! This is a temporary job. Enjoy me while I'm here. I'm on my way to my destiny. Shout amen, somebody. When you go home tonight, walk around your house and your apartment and say, this ain't what I saw. This is a temporary residence. I'm on my way to what he showed me. Oh, come on, pastors. Go back to that building that you're in. Walk around the building and say, this ain't what I saw. This is a temporary church building. Clap your hands and scream hallelujah. Stop living by your eyes. Start living by your vision. The just shall live by faith, not by sight. Clap your hands and thank God you are not going to be where you are next year. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, God. Give him praise. Listen to me, and we're going to go, oh, Lord. God says, you see this here? God says, look. He says, I put the seed of everything in itself. He says, everything is in a seed. God does not give trees. He that giveth seed. Tell your neighbor, you don't know what I am. And he gave me to you. Yes, sir. God doesn't give adults. He hides them in children. And... <laughs> I want to show you something. Don't forget this. Are you all ready for me? Yes. All right. God, today we got 6.7 billion humans on earth. Right now, 6.7 billion. God only made one. Oh, uh, listen to me now. God went to the soil and made one. And God blew in to one. Now remember, God don't start until he's already finished. So God started, which means he was already finished. You see, God finished with everybody first. He made everybody first. 
and then took everybody and put them in one body. So Adam was everybody in one body. That's the seed. So in the garden, when God was talking to Noah, I mean to Adam rather, he was talking to everybody in one body. But God told everybody in one body, don't touch the tree. If you shook hands with Adam, you'd be shaking hands with everybody. You wouldn't have known it because everybody was in that one body. And whatever that one body does, everybody does. That's why the Bible says by one man, sin entered into the whole world and was passed upon all men because everybody was in that one body. Everybody said potential. Adam was loaded. When God finished all the instructions, then God didn't go outside to find a female. He went inside the brother, pulled out a cover somebody. She was already in there. Everybody said potential. That means everybody was in the one body. This is why Jesus Christ didn't need a million bodies to die. Because when he came, he had Adam. He was the last Adam. He had Adam inside of him. He had everybody inside his body. So by one man sin entered, by one man all was saved. But come on, somebody. Thank you very much, Adam. Now, follow me. Can I go? Follow me. So that means when God has a seed, here's what God says. I put the seed of everything inside the seed. It's called potential. So in every seed, I have a seed, there's a seed. I ask you, what do you see? Okay, this is an apple seed. What do you see? You say, I see an apple seed. Well, that's a fact, but it's not the truth. Because what I have in my hand is not an apple seed. I have an apple tree. But that's not the truth either. Because in that seed is an apple tree with apples. But that ain't quite the truth yet. Because in that seed is an apple tree that has apples that have seeds. And those seeds in the apple get trees. But that ain't true either. Because in that seed, there's an apple tree that has apples that have seeds that have trees. And those trees get apples that have seeds that have trees that have fruit that have seeds with trees with fruit that have seeds with trees with fruit that have apples with seeds with trees that have fruit that have seeds that have trees that have fruit. And those fruit get seeds with seeds with trees that have fruit that have seeds that have trees that have fruit that have seeds that have trees with fruit with seeds. And those seeds got trees that have fruit, that have seeds, that have trees, that have fruit. What did God do here? In my hand, you see an apple seed. That's a fact. But the truth is, I have a forest. Tell your neighbor, it's a fact right now that I'm broke. But the truth is, I'm loaded. Give God a hand for potential. Your son today is an alcoholic. God says, no, that's just a fact. The truth is, he's going to be a great preacher in Mario. God can look at a murderer and see inside the murderer. Now the fact is, he's a murderer. That's a fact. But the truth is, inside of him is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Inside a murderer. The next time you read the book of Genesis or Exodus, 
or Leviticus, you're reading the writings of a murderer. Only God look at a murderer and see a deliverer. The Ten Commandments. The laws of God inside a murderer. Hey boys, a potential. That means none of your mistakes can cancel what you carry in. Come on, scream, say amen. Only God could look at a shepherd boy and see a king on the inside. Only God could look at a prostitute named Rahab and see the lineage of Jesus Christ inside a prostitute. Only God could look at a shepherd boy in the wilderness and see the leader of a country. Only God could look at a serial killer named Saul and see Genesis coming true in the New Testament. Inside that serial killer, he said, First Corinthians, Colossians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, he saw the New Testament in a serial killer. I wonder what he's seeing tonight looking down on this building. He never sees what you've done. He sees what you are carrying. And you are carrying awesome treasure. Let no one cancel your future with their words. Tell your neighbor, I am who he says I am. I can do what he says I can do. If I see it, it's already done. And I'm going to my destiny. I am full of potential. Give God a big scream and shout for a second. I want you to understand tonight that he knew you'd be here. And he knew that you hit a brick wall. Your life has stopped. And he has sent this word to tell this church and to tell you visitors, you ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, come on, give him glory. Come on, give him praise. Oh, come on, give him glory. Oh, stand up on your feet and give him worship. Mr. Mayor, what are you dreaming? That's the question. What, are you, what is he showing you when you was a child? Being a mayor is nothing. Why? It's done. Now go be governor. Do something else. Dream big. This is why the word retirement does not exist in the Bible. Don't get quiet on me now. It's not in the Bible. You don't retire. You empty yourself and then you leave. God called Abraham at 75 years old. He got started at 75. What's your problem? Tell your neighbor, you ain't seen nothing yet. Tell your neighbor, no retirement. Refirement. Come on, get that fire back. Give God a praise. You got to get that fire back in your bones, brother. Hallelujah. Hold hands together. Take your neighbor's hands on your right and left. Tell your neighbor, I'm loaded. I'm loaded. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, you don't know who I am yet. Keep holding that hand. I want to pray for you. Our organization is in over 100 countries in 30 years. We are worth millions of dollars. Started with nothing but an idea. Potential. 
My first employee in the company and in our organization was my eldest sister. She's 11 children. She's my she's eldest sister. Eldest one in the family. When I was born, she told me that I was born with asthma. And she and mom told me stories how I literally died many times, choking in that wooden crib. And that how she would get up every night when she heard me choking. She would pick me up out of that dirty wooden crib, put me on her shoulder. And my sister said she would walk that wooden floor, not sleeping. Because she knew if she'd lie me down, I would turn blue again and die. And for months, she says, every night she would get up to make sure I didn't die. You know, today, my eldest sister is my administrative assistant. I pay her salary. And she and I were talking in the office a couple of months ago again, and, and she was reminding me. She says, you are all over the world on television. You have books in 89 countries, 30 languages. Offices in 17 nations. Millions of people being impacted by you all over the world. She said, I remember walking up and down with you. Saving you from death. And I said to her, isn't that amazing? You didn't know all those nights you had your boss in your hand. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, be careful with that hand. I could be your next boss. You don't know anybody in this room. You don't know who is in this room. Stop canceling people. Don't throw your children away. Don't throw members away who fall. You don't know what they're carrying. This is why God loves the garbage dump. Every time society throws someone away, God catches them. Because he knows what he put inside of you. He died to protect the treasure that you're carrying. We have this treasure in earthen vessels to show forth the glory. My sister had no idea. Not only would I pay her salary, but her husband is my financial vice president. Her daughter works in my mentorship department. Her second daughter works in my television department. I pay the salary of all of her family. She was carrying that in her hand every night didn't know what she was carrying tell your neighbor be nice to me you don't know hallelujah you are not finished yet there are books inside of you the job you have is not where you will die. You are as big as your dreams, not as big as Marriott. Believe what he showed you. Don't give up, son. Don't go to school for their sake. Go to school for your own sake. Study for your dreams. Eighteen years. It's okay. You've done okay. I'm coming back at 36. You will not be in this room. This will be too small. This will be a children's church. Can you see that?
call you pastors, God sent you here. Because you think that the building you're in is the permanent address. But God says it's your temporary residence. God sent me here, you young people, because you figured you can't go any further. And God says, I'm sending you a word. Follow your dream, not your culture. The Holy Spirit has already finished you. The fact that you were born is evidence that there's something already finished that you were born to start. And this is why, and listen carefully as I close, Jesus did not die 2,000 years ago. <laughs> he came to start dying 2,000 years ago. The Bible says he was dead. He was slain before I rest my case. God was finished. God saved you before you sinned. Oh, come on, give him glory. Come on, give him glory. I said give him praise. Finish. And that's why he's here tonight to tell you what you saw when you were 14 is still true. What you saw when you were 20 is still true. What you saw when you were 29 is still true. So dust off yourself. Get back up. And put your vision back in place. And when you go to work tomorrow, tell them, I'm going to my preoccupation. This is my temporary employment. This is not what I saw. For the joy that was set before him, he could endure the low salary and the abuse and the misunderstanding for the joy that was set before he already seen the end let's hold hands together again something's happening here don't you feel that on the inside? Your childhood dreams are coming back. Do you know why, ma'am? Because he said when the Holy Spirit comes upon a person, he didn't come for you to fall on the ground. He came so that the old men could get their dreams back. And the young men shall get their visions back. And the handmaidens shall see prophetic sight. He comes to give you back the dream that you lost. Hallelujah. Thank you. It's the Holy Spirit. This year, preach the next 10 years. Tell them what you see. Oh man, get your dream back. Get your dream back. Your body is not your limitation. Your brain is still working. Young man, get your vision back. Go back, get your vision. Don't get a job. They can fire you from that. Get a vision. Young woman, see your future and put it on paper. And believe what you're right. And 
the Holy Spirit shall come upon all men. And the young shall see visions again. And the old shall get dreams again. They will see their end. Marion is about to explode. New businesses, new churches, new companies, new investments, new ideas, books and music and publishing and magazines coming out of Marion, going around the world. God says, I'm going to change the world right from here. Can you believe it? Believe your dream. And let no adult talk you out of them. Believe your dreams. When I was 14 years old, I wrote on paper, I will build buildings. I will fly my own jet. I will speak to millions. I will be on TV. I will write books. I was 14. And my family said, are you crazy? And I said, this is what I saw. You should see what else I saw. Next week, I'll be with the government of Curacao training the entire government. Week after that, the government of Aruba, training the entire government, including the president and the prime ministers, in my seminars. That's what I saw. It's happening right now. God begins you with nothing, so he could be everything. You are not what you have. You are what you saw. So go dream again. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, the hand that we're touching is loaded. Forgive us for assuming we know them. Forgive us for thinking that we understand them. Oh God, forgive us for being reckless with our love. Forgive us for having prejudice and racism and all the stuff that breaks these barriers. Lord, we pray we will see the gift that's in every one of us. Help us to cherish the potential on the inside help us to protect each other may we never act in any way that will destroy our potential protect our friendships Lord I pray you release right now the spirit of revelation in Jesus name Holy Spirit stir up every dream stir up every gift stir up every vision and everyone here Lord as we agree in faith stir up our gifts Restore our visions. Help us to believe what you say, Lord. Not what people think. Deliver us from people that we may fulfill your purpose. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this week. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, feel that anointing in your stomach. Let that dream come back to life. Restore what has been taken away from you. Get your vision back. Come here, Pastor. 
Kanamurabarababasatera Moshe. Krendorobobosorabrabata. 